got culling. The sun's beginning to peek through, so I had to put my umbrella up and kind of get ready for the heat to arrive. <laughs> Expect the good. <laughs> Can you get the expectant attitude of faith? Not waiting for the next evil to befall you, but waiting with the child's joy. Trust the next good in store. <laughs> That's all there is to that one. Okay. <laughs> you know, there is a reality to, like these glasses, of... What you see sometimes is what you get. There was a story written in the scriptures about the children of Israel that went to Mount Sinai. They had just been rescued from Egypt. They had seen God move through the man Moses and deliver them from the Egyptian army. And they knew that God could perform all these miracles. Interesting thing is God took them to a place where they waited at the foot of the mountain and then he spoke and the people who had been absorbed into Egyptian culture had become so forgotten of what they were meant to be that when God spoke, they were terrified of him. These were the people chosen by God that God had said were his people forever. And by the time they had been in Egypt for so long, they had been so indoctrinated by the culture of Egyptians that when God appeared to them, they were no longer ready. They were not prepared to deal with God one to one. Moses, who had been raised in the court of Egypt, who had been not knowing his own heritage, who had been a stranger to the ways of God, had been taken out of Egypt and for 40 days was basically nobody. Somebody out in the desert learning the world and its ways. And yet God chose him and after those 40 days, or 40 years, took him back to Egypt and brought them to this mountain. Well, when God spoke, Moses was excited to go up and find out what God would say. Moses spoke to God. God spoke to Moses. But the people is what's interesting. Some of them, were told, heard thunder. Some of them heard the voice of the Lord. Some of them heard lightning. And you ask, how do you hear lightning? And that's an interesting story. The rabbis talk about a real interesting way of looking at that. But anyways, to keep it short, none of them, except Joshua, but none of them wanted to go up the mountain. They told Moses, look, you go up the mountain and you find out what God has to say and then come down and tell us. But we're not going up there. You know, and we don't want to deal with this kind of God face to face. I wonder in that story often when we look at God do we sometimes get a little carried away with the type of glasses we're wearing that maybe blur the image of God a little bit because we treat him as too possibly too intimate that you know we bring him into our sinfulness we don't treat him as holy or sometimes we treat him as too holy and we don't come close to walking up the mountain you see Moses though he had intimacy with God still when he was at the presence of God took off his sandals because the ground he was walking on was holy we can have God our father as daddy he can be just as intimate and real as we choose to allow him to become in our lives, but he's still holy. He's still God. He still loves us, but he is righteous. And Jesus said that 
since you know I love you, and he proved it by demonstrating his love on the cross, he said the Father loves you even more. But he also said that there is more that I could speak of in heaven that you can't bear right now, and that you can't even understand the things that I speak of on earth. So, just remember when you're approaching God or when you're trying to understand what's going on in your life, you're wearing glasses like I do. You only see what you're looking at. Sometimes we need to have our eyes opened to a bigger picture of what's going on in our lives as well as what's going on with God. Because most people are only interested in what involves themselves. They forget that God looks at what involves everyone, the entire body of Christ, the entire churches that are involved, that God said he walks in the midst of, that not all look the same, not all talk the same, not all are the same. And each one, according to the book of Revelation, has a different issue and a different perspective. And they all see or deal with God in a different way. There can be no one perfect church. There can be no one perfect way, except in relationship, to deal with God because He's personal to you. He knows you better than you know you. And so He deals with you a little bit different, though in the big picture the same, a little bit different than He does with me. One person might easily be convinced by God speaking to them and say, do this and they go do it. Another person might take a little slapping around and they go do it. Another person might not do it at all. And God keeps them in the palm of his hand, but he protects them because they can't handle anything more. <clears throat> Some may appear to be with God and may actually be contrary to what God is telling them to do. The way we know the difference, the way that we abide in his presence, the way that we seek to walk in his ways is the way Moses did. You got to go up the mountain for yourself and see God. And Moses said that. I want to go up this mountain and see what this burning bush is that burns without flame and is not consumed or burns with flame and is not consumed. You have to find out for yourself who God is, what God is, and how God is working in your life. And the reason we're called Christian is because we do that through Jesus. Jesus said that if any man come unto me, you know, he would not refuse them. So for you, because I've done this, you have to come to Jesus at some point in time and ask him to reveal himself to you. Now, people call this a salvation message, and if you want to, you can. You're not saved. You're participating in what he's done for you, and that brings about salvation because it protects you from a destination that you don't want to go to, which is hell. But really, it's not about salvation as much as relationship is finding out that God intended you to have a personal relationship with him where you could talk to and discover that God is real. And when you do, then everything makes sense. You may not understand it all at first, but it'll make sense because you can talk to he who created all this in the first place. To do that, Jesus said that you must be born again. That that which is born of the flesh is flesh and it deals with fleshy rules and regulations and it can be only you can touch it you can see it you can feel it you can abide you're going to die by it the physical body will die but that there was also a spiritual birth where you could be born of the spirit because he had always said so from the beginning of creation that man is a spirit and that god created him as such and that when adam sinned his spirit died because he said in the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die and the spirit of man died. But Jesus came so that he could breathe life into you like he did in creation, like he does in babies when they become physically alive. The reality is you 
can become spiritually alive by being born again of the Spirit. You simply ask and you'll receive. You seek and you'll find and if you knock it will be open because Jesus said just come unto me. I don't care how you do it. Just come to me. Now there are giant evangelism things you can go to and you can say a sinner's prayer and go forward and ask God into your life. You can watch it on television and do something like that. Or you can just get alone with God and talk to Him. God is real. He'll lead you where you need to go and what you need to do. You don't have to repeat some prayer after me or any other person. All you need to do is seek God and He'll direct you. And as He does, if He brings you to a sinner's prayer or some prayer or some going forward or some standing up or some raising hand or some asking Jesus into your life, then do it. Try it. See if it works. Pursue it. But don't be satisfied until you find it. Because Jesus said that they that seek me must seek me with all of their heart. And when you do, no matter how you do it, you will find him. And you'll find out that Jesus is alive and he's coming back. But you'll find out that God is real. And for me, I think that the glasses you've been wearing might not fit anymore. Because there's a whole lot more to see than what you're looking at. And a whole lot more to experience than what you know. And I can only tell you what I have experienced and seen in my life. And I know is true. God is real. God is speaking to you. God is directing you. And if you want to find out whether you hear thunder, hear lightning, or hear the word of the Lord, or hear God speak, I hate to say it, but sooner or later you got to go up that mountain and find out for yourself. It's not that hard to climb. It really isn't. All you got to do is ask Him. Just ask.